a human son. Mankind, the way it stands today, they are inferior to man. And man are the sons of God. So you shouldn't be shy and be concerned about them. Just go your board, not begin to throw away your weight. No, just come there, declare who you are. And that most changes. Amen. And for the Pastor Fumi, we, we told us to, this year is an extraordinary year. That testimony, confession will be in their account. The children of God cannot be suppressed anymore. As long as we have the mindset of the sons of God and not the mindset of children of men pursuing the things that children of men pursue. Whatever you do as a child of God, your vocation, your profession, you are all those things you do. You are on an assignment. On a deployment by the Lord to occupy for him in that place. You may not know the fullness of it. We don't know the fullness of it. But because of who we are, we say occupy till I come. Let us commit, pray for these two testimonies. One, that the Holy Spirit will continue to guide us and give us the knowledge, the discernment, and the courage to always occupy for Christ and stand for him without noise. Number two, you, are, you pray that wherever the enemy has premeditated or set up a trap for you to lure you into a place of failure or a place of suffering or a place of adversity, that the Lord will go ahead of you and destroy every such trap. And there will be confusion in their camp. They will not be able to carry through whatever they have planned against you as a child of God. The Bible says, even if you have made a mistake and you become a lawful captive, in other words, you are truly guilty of what you are being accused of. The Bible asks, the Lord asks in the Bible, can such a lawful captive be, dis- be delivered? He said, yes. The prey of the strong man can be delivered. He said, I will deliver, and I will deliver your children. In other words, if you are guilty of something, you made a mistake. You got into, you know you shouldn't, but you did into it for whatever reason. And you come before God today, the Lord says, even though you are guilty, you are going to be delivered from your plans and the snares we've set for you. So let us pray. Let us pray. Remember the first word. You are a child of God and the Holy Spirit of God is not in you in vain. Number two, you confess those things. If you are guilty, Lord, you said, even the captive, the prey of the strong man shall be delivered. Father, send confusion in their midst. Where I am not guilty. Father, exonerate me and justify me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, let me be confused in the name of Jesus. You are sons of God. You are sons of God. Is with you. The Lord is so shine, Lord, wherever we go, Father. The Lord knows you. In that day, Lord, not a happy God. We will possess environments for your kingdom, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we will possess places for your kingdom, Lord. In the name of Jesus, He knows the beginning from the end, and He knows kingdom, Lord. And God does not make wrong choices. He does not repent on His choices and change His mind. He does not repent on His choices and change His mind. He saw you before you were born. 
He told you before the foundation of the world. Ask for Jehovah God. Let the nation be upon the camps of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, Jehovah God. As they gather, they gather and fail in the name of Jesus. Every other situation of the enemy. Against my household, against my marriage, against my husband, against my wife, my husband, against myself. Victory. It is not uh, Father, possible God, shall gather, oh Lord, for the enemy shall gather, Father, God, to overcome the child of God. Because they are not gathered by you. They are not gathered of you, Father God. In the name Lord, of Jesus, I cannot stop them from gathering, Lord Lord. But you have God, God as they gather, you over God, make a condition of them. Every ah, Father, that they will gather and fail, Lord Lord, in the name of Jesus. They will gather and not agree, Lord Lord. They will gather to disagree, Lord Lord. In the name and of Jesus, O Kari Baba Bashi, do not care for what you eat, what you eat, what you eat, where you will live, what you take care of that. I can as they gather against my husband's job, oh Father God. They will gather and fail, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. They will gather and fail, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Our Lord Jesus. They will gather, oh Lord, and fail in the name of Jesus. Forget about As they gather against my business, they will gather and fail, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. As they gather against my children, they will gather and fail in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah God. Every Thank plan you, of the Father. devil is to Thank get you, my King and my Savior. Thank you, my Lord and my Savior. Every plan of the attack of the devil today is neutralized in the name of Jesus Christ. You and your family stand at the place Upon the rock you are placed. In the name of Jesus, O Father God, I shall be a city that is sat on a hill of a sense that shall never go deep. A living sacrifice and a living testimony of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever I go, Jehovah God, I will manifest your glory, manifest your power, manifest your presence in the mighty name of Jesus, oh Father God. No tongue that is in you are the one who will condemn them. Oh, thank you, Jehovah God. Thank you, Abba Father. That is your the favor of the Lord is upon you. Glory to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is good to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is good to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is good to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to this great church. Sunday service, hallelujah. Wherever you're watching from, we welcome you. We appreciate you joining us. Please, inform people around you. If you are being blessed, connect with them. Let them join us as well. Hallelujah. We thank God for your life. And we pray that it shall be well with you. And we pray that everyone who joined us today will be blessed. Hallelujah. The blessings of the Lord is available. And please receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Everywhere you are, receive, 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 connect. Join us. Send us messages if you will. If you are being blessed, let us know about it. We will continue to pray for you. I want to inform us that on Thursdays, we have prayer meeting also. We call it the prayer altar. We are the kneeling warriors intercede for people. So if you have prayer needs, just send them to us. We have people who will be praying for you, very, very faithful people. We will have Tremendous testimonies. Amen. 
You don't have to be a member of the church. Just send your prayer request. If you have family that have prayer requests, send them in. Email it to us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. God bless you. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. And we pray that every Sunday we shall continue to have new testimonies. Because we are supposed to be demonstrative of who we are and what God is doing in our lives. Amen? Our Lord Jesus Christ said, if you don't believe that I'm who I said I am, believe in my work, the things that I do. We cannot continue to say we are this and we are that and we have no work to show for us. God blesses. God is demonstrating. So pray. No testimony is too small. Always know that. Don't think your testimony is not worth giving. If it makes a meaning to you and you appreciate it that God has done something for you, share it with others. Amen. Hallelujah. Today, we want to talk on a topic titled New Wine. New Wine. Our Bible reading is taken from 2 Samuel 2, 1 to 7. 2 Samuel 2, 1 to 7. Chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Please read for us quickly. 2 Samuel 2, 1 to 7. So it happened after this that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up into one of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said to him, Go up. David asked, Where shall I go? And he said, To Hebron. So David went up there to Hebron with his two wives also, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel in Judah. And David brought up his men who were with him, each one with his household, and they lived in the cities of Hebron. Then the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. Then they told David, it was the men of Jabesh Gilead who buried Saul. So David sent messengers to the men of Jabesh Gilead and said to them, may you be blessed by the Lord because you showed this graciousness and loyalty to Saul, your Lord, king, and buried him. Now may the Lord show loving kindness and truth and faithfulness to you. I too will show this goodness to you because you have done this thing. So now let your hands be strong and be valiant for your Lord Saul is dead. And also the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our memory verse is taken from Mark 22, uh, 21 and 22. Verses 21 and 22. The Bible says, no man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment. Else the new piece that filled it up taketh away from the old and the rent is made worse. That was 21. Verse 22 says, and no man putteth new wine into old bottles. Also the new wine doth burst the bottles and the wine is spilled and the bottles will be mad or ruined. But new wine must be put into new bottles. That's our memory verse for today. Sorry, Mark 2, 2.21 to 22. Mark 2, not Mark 22, thank you very much. Mark 2, Mark 2, 21, chapter, sorry, Mark chapter 2, 21 and 22. I thought that was funny. Amen. Praise the Lord. As we begin to gradually transition from the COVID-19 isolation to returning to physical congregational worship gathering, we must be careful not to do this hastily 
but carefully seek the Lord's face and mind as to how, where, when, what, and with whom. In the last two and a half years or so, we have experienced just like the world, the COVID palaver, the COVID issue that hasn't really gone away, but has reduced in intensity, but resurging in some areas. But the world is opening up again after the isolation, after the lockdown to contain the spread and the devastation of the COVID uh, uh, pandemic. Many institutions have regrouped again. Many businesses and corporations are still working remotely. And of course, some of them might never really go back to uh, uh, regrouping because of the expenses associated with rent and mortgages and all kinds of things. And they found out that they can still be effective remotely. So many workers are working from their home. As a church, many congregations, as church, many congregations have gone back, albeit not full, because many people have not rejoined, and many people have no plans of rejoining. So there's a permanent change out there. There is still that need for physical interaction, the social connectivity in gathering together and all that. They are all good. So some churches rushed into it. Some churches have decided they might not even go back to physical congregational worship. It is cheaper and easier to do it remotely on Zoom and other platforms. Some churches are going back to combine both the physical congregational worship and the online worship, combine the same service going on together, which is what we may be doing at Day Spring Church. We know that the remote one, the online one works because that's what we're doing right now. If you're listening to me, that is what it's all about. And all our congregations today are watching and following this service online via Zoom. But we have started praying, we have a feeling, a staring that we should activate our congregational, physical congregational gathering again. But when we do, we don't know how many people are going to come to that of will people still prefer to be worshiping for home. We don't know how many people who are not members of our churches, of our church will come and join us. In other words, whatever we do, it is to reach out and do the work the Lord has called us to do, take the gospel to the people. Amen. So as we continue this process, thinking about it, we say we must not be hasty about it. As our memory verse says, we must not put old wine in a new vessel, or a new wine in an old vessel. It destroys everything. We must not go on as business as usual. The people who hastily go went back are trying to do what they were doing before the COVID pandemic. They lost could have been long during the COVID uh, 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 pandemic uh, lockdown and isolation. My prayer that we should pray. 
and know why God allowed such thing to happen, especially to the church. For us, we must be careful not to do the movement, the transition back to physical gathering hastily, but carefully seek the Lord's face and mind as how to do it, where to do it, when to do it, what to do, and with whom to do it. These are very, very important questions. These are the ways the Lord will lead us. We are not the master here. The Lord is the master. We are servants. We are his children. We are his agents. If we have to do anything about the church, it has to be done according to the will of God. Remember what the Bible says concerning prayer. They say we have one confidence. And that confidence is predicated on the fact that when we pray according to his will, he hears us. And because he has heard us, we have received our petition. God has his ways. He has his master's plans. He said, I know the thought I'm taking towards you, which is for peace and not for evil, to take you to your expected end. He knows your expected end. He knows the path to it. He knows how to get you there. I, he didn't even say, I'm sending you to your expected end. He said, I am taking you. So you always ask God, hold my hand. I am prone to wander. I am prone to stray. Please hold my hand and lead me. It should be your daily prayer. There are so many distractions in the world. And those distractions are ways of men, not necessarily ways of God. And the Bible tells us, there are ways that seem good unto a man, but the end of it is destruction. That is why you cannot afford to go presumptuously in your own way, or expediently on your own way, always wait and seek his face. The great man of God, Paul in the Bible, when he got saved, did the Bible not say he went to Saudi Arabia, to the Arabia, and he stayed there for how many years, 11 years or so? What was he doing? He went and waited on God. Until he was sufficiently strong enough to plunge into the ministry. And we saw how victorious he was in the Lord because he waited to know what to do. We are too hasty these days. The spirit of presumptuousness, the sin of presumptuousness is delay, derailing many, derailing many ministries. Praise the Lord. In 2 Samuel chapter 2, um, we read how King David found himself at a crossroad after a great victory over the Amalekites. And the reigning king of Israel and his children, thus King Saul and his children, we are just killed in battle by the Philistines. One will think that since the coast is clear for King David to step up and take over the throne of Israel in the place of late King Saul, instead, what did he do? The Bible said, and, at, and it comes to pass after this, that David inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said unto him, go up. And David said, whither shall I go up? 
and he said unto Hebron. In our Bible reading, the very first verse there, that's why we use that piece of the Bible, the Bible reading. About not being presumptuous, about not taking the power, the, 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 the the, the, the presence of expediency. You know, in our Bible study, we talk about having legal right to do something, but that thing is not expedient. That's at the time. We found David here. When King Saul was king, we know that King Saul wasn't a very obedient king. And because of his disobedience, the Philistines prevailed in battle over Israel and were destroying Israel. By then, David was still a straggler, being pursued by King Saul himself to kill him, because he has been told you are disobedient, and David will replace you. He did not want that. He wants his children to replace him. So David was running from his own country, his king, King Saul. And at the same time, bringing judgment of God because of King Saul's uh, uh, disobedience on the Amalekites. David had just fought a battle with the Amalekites who invaded Hebron where his, where his family were and captured them and stole them away. He had victory over them, God gave him victory, and he recovered everyone. He recovered great wealth and property. Overnight, he became so powerful and rich. And God can do that for you. When God is setting you up for your assignment, he prepares you. He gives you the people, your team of agreement. He prepares the place for you. He prepares the material and all the help that you will need. So you see, David found himself at this crossroad. I have wealth now. I have victory now. I've removed the threat of the Amalekites by destroying their army. But on the other hand, Saul has been defeated. Israel has been defeated by the Philistines. So you see David in a situation where with the knowledge that God said to him, you will one day become king of Israel. I have chosen you. You are a man after my heart. David was aware of that. And he had victory now. He had the means to go and occupy. Why? Because King Saul was dead. So the coast is clear for him to step up and assume and take the throne of Israel. But David was not that kind of person. We saw here that David avoided the folly of expediency and the sin of presumption. The folly of expediency is when you think all things are working for you, you have the right, the capacity, the legal position, the support to do something. And you forget to ask God. David had the legal right, for God said you are going to be king, to assume the throne of Israel. David had the capacity for his army, was the only existing army in Israel at that time, because the one that Saul led had been destroyed and scattered. David had the support of many. So he could have stepped up at the opportunity of expediency assume the rule and occupy the vacuum that Saul left when he died. But David was not that kind of a person. 
David was not presumptuous. I know what God wants me to do. I know what to do. You presume you know, and you go ahead and do it in your faith. You have a confidence, but the confidence is based on presumption because you haven't heard the last instruction from the one who raised you. David will not, will not be caught doing that. David did not say, God in the past said I will be king and now is my chance. I now have the opportunity, the power and the legal right to go ahead and do what seems to be the right thing. That would be exercising the power of expediency if he did that and presumption by presuming to know what God wanted. You may know what God wanted, but do you know the timing? Do you know who are your team of agreement that he has raised for you to succeed? We presume a lot of things. We just take one verse in the Bible and mount it and then run out to do that. When we fail, we begin to wonder what happened. And then we turn around and tell, give excuses why we failed. And most of those excuses are lies. How can you lie for the things of God and expect a holy God to accept that lie? Like King David, in our own situation, transitioning from remote and online servicing and back to congregational service. That is what this is all about. And this stage, God is doing a new thing. The COVID debacle was not for nothing. For the discerning, it marked another important, uh, the calendar, important date on the calendar of the church. People really don't, they, they, they don't think about this thing. They don't think through it. How many people have sought God quickly? Say, where is this taking us? Where has this taken us? What have changed? The world, just like the COVID virus, is mutating, changing, adjusting, just to survive. Mutation from one stage to the other, from one variant to the other, which is exactly what the world is doing. Adjusting to the mutation, to the variance, adjusting the way they do business to continue to do business. Adjusting here, adjusting there, new things, old things. Just do anything to just keep going forward. And the question is, where is forward? What are they rushing to? Is it the end by fire? Oh, of course, they're not believers. They don't believe in all those things. But that's not the same with the church. Have we sat down and seek God's face? Lord, what, does, what do all these things mean? It's one thing to say, I believe God, I have faith. Well, you do. Faith in what? You know, people who say that are saying they have faith in things. You don't have faith in anything. You know, can only have faith in Christ Jesus. And if you have faith in him, you are obligated to love him because he's good. And if you love him, you will be obedient. And if you're obedient, that means you can hear from him. He's leading you. The things that you say you have faith to do are they truly instruction and guidance from him. Those are the things Christians, true Christians, will do. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who is an example for us, said to us, I do nothing, but I do only those things that I see my father do. He does not do anything that is outside 
the guidance and instructions of the Father. The Holy Spirit, he said, will be sent to us. And he was sent on the day of Pentecost. I said, when he comes, he will teach us all things. He will bring to our remembrance the things that we have been taught. He will take the things of the Lord and show to us. And he will show us things that are yet to be. And finally, he will be with us to the very end. The Holy Spirit is coming, not to do his own bidding, but to do the bidding of the Trinity. If that is the case, what about us? Who are supposed to be the sons of God? Are we doing our own presumptuous bidding? Or are we children and act on expediency in our haste? Or are we patient to learn and to hear from the Holy Spirit who will guide us into all truth? In this scripture, we have chosen by the special grace of God to be a church that waits on God, to be a church that seeks and desires the will of God. The voice of God. Because that is where our confidence of success and victory lie. That if we pray, that we have a confidence that when we pray according to his will, he hears us. And because he has heard us, we have received our petition. God is not obligated to answer your prayer that is not based on his will. You can shout all you want. You can cry all you want. If it's not according to his will, he's not obligated to listen to you. That is why it is good and prudent to wait on him. If you truly have faith in him, you will know that he will not forsake you. You should not be so hasty that you make mistakes and take presumptuous, presumptuous steps that is not based on the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Like King David, this spring church will not presume to know what to do or resort to expediency by jumping on whatever we see, but pray and continue to pray for the Lord's will and guidance. In our transitions, in our movement, we want to do it right. We are still meeting, be it online. We know that that corporate gathering, congregational gathering, physical corporate congregational gathering is still valid. And we are going to combine those to reach as many as the Lord will commit to us in this great church. Amen. We will not presume to know what God wants. God is not man. We will not presume to know or to say that we know where he wants us to be, with whom he wants us to gather what we will be doing because we don't know the final effect of what we are doing. Only God knows and only God directs it. It is all about him. We are here as beneficiaries of the wonderful grace and love of God, the mercy of God. He has called us and chose us before the foundation of the world. And he has made a plan before the foundation of the world. And then he chose us and brought us forth in this generation, in this season, at this time, in the annals of history of the world, to be his children 
occupying the space at this time on earth with him in us and the Holy Ghost to continue to implement that which he has ordained before the foundation of the world. We have no knowledge of what they are supposed to be, but we are instrument of his valor. We are instrument in his hand to occupy this space at the time that we have been sent to occupy this space. It's like a relay race. The saints of the old have run their race and they handed the baton to us. Now we have grabbed and take hold of the baton to run our own race until it is time for us to hand to the next leg. We cannot run it at our own rules, with our own different kind of rules. We cannot run this race whatever way we want or whatever track we, want, we wish to. No, you'll be disqualified. The physical race, the relay race, their guidelines, the same thing we are doing right now. So whatever you need to do in the Lord, you have to do it according to his guidelines. The Bible made it very, very clear. That every man that runs a race runs to win, but he has to run that race according to the guidelines that is set. Otherwise, you'll be disqualified. There are many churches today that are doing man's bidding. They just do so. I mean, some of them are big, mighty churches, big movement. Those are social, worldly canal children of the world movement. There are many of them that are big, that have very strong churches led by the Holy Spirit. There are small churches that are not, the Spirit of God is not there. They just use the name church or Jesus. There are all kinds of things out there. That's why the Bible says that you should test the spirit and see if it's of the Lord. No presumptuousness. Experiency is there, but it should not be used carelessly without inquiry, without wisdom. So in this picture, We have decided to see God's face, to transition us the way he wants us, he wants, to position us where he wants us to be, where he has prepared our ground, prepared ground, some places for us, to join with us, even those that we do not know now, who are part of our team of agreement, for this is the church of Jesus Christ. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against or above it. We know that there are, there are deceptions out there. The antidote to deception is the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. As the Bible says in our memory verse, Mark 2, 22. And no man put it new wine into old bottles, else the new wine doth burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be mad or ruined. But new wine must be put into new bottles. Our new move is a new wine, a new wine by the Holy Spirit. It must not be poured into the old vessel of business as usual. This is how we've been doing it. So we are going back to do the thing that we've been doing. We knew how to do. No. It's a new move by the Holy Spirit. It's a new order that the Lord has set forth. It's a new galvanization for the preparation of the return of the Son of God, our Lord and Master, Jesus Christ. 
which is what the Holy Spirit came to do, to prepare a body for him, to prepare the church for his second coming. And this new wine, this new moon, is occasioned and arranged by God so that if you are obedient and you are in that moon, you will be prepared and be ready for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must not put it back to, we know what to do, presumptuousness. Oh, these are the opportunities we have. We have this opening here, we have that opening. Let's take advantage of it. Expediency. The question is, what is the Lord saying? Where are we supposed to go? Remember what I said in the past, there will be a revival, almost like worldwide revival, but that revival will be a fake revival. The revival, we call it a revival because it will be a mass movement, not a Holy Spirit revival, but it will look like you will see religions merging together. You can see the line between Islam and Christianity being blurred. All the religions forging together in the name of peace and humanity or with the exclusion of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. They may even mention the name of Jesus, but it will be difficult for them to explain the Holy Spirit. That movement will come, mark my words. The true revival is the revival that will take place in the remnant. The elect of God. They will be persecuted, but they will not relent. They are not going to be noisy because they will be hunted down treasurized, but well, because they are the elect of God, they will not relent, they will not back down. And by the time the persecution gets out of hand, there will be rapture. Mark my word. The new beginning, the new wine is the preparation and the setting for this stage. Amen. It shall not be business as usual. Let us as a church together in agreement seek the Lord's face and will in prayer ask God to show us the way. Let us pray with regards to the new ways that God wants, new place that he wants us to be located, new direction, the way to do ministry. Let us pray for the resources we need to embark on this. Spiritual, physical, financial, and material resources. Our brother, Pastor Sonny, has earlier started us off, has already started us off earlier at the beginning of this worship service, where he said that we should begin to pray about our move, pray for Day Spring Church, as if he knew what the message today will be. I know he knew because the Holy Spirit must have put that in his spirit. They say we should pray about these things. Let's follow suit and pray today for the above for this spring church. Pray for that God will show us the new way. God will locate us at a prepared place. God will give us new dimension of ministry, whereby the gifts of the spirits 
will be prevalent and common in this congregation to do the work that we have been assigned and called to do. We are not trying to copy any church. We are not trying to be like anyone else. That is not what we are called to do. We are not chorus singers. We are a people prepared as vessels for the Lord to do his will and his bidding in this generation at this time. Let us pray for the resources because this will take a tremendous amount of resources. Spiritual resources, you need people who are strong in the Holy Ghost. Physical resources where you have physical health and energy. That means we need injections of young people from teenagers to the people who are in their 40s. They galvanize and energize every church. The 20s, the 30s, and the 40s, and teenagers. We need material, the resources to be able to do this. Because of our time, let us pray. We indulge the grace of our brethren, Pastor Sonny, Deaconess Elvira, Pastor George, to lead us for five minutes each. Okay, let's take it down to two minutes each because of our time. In this area that you are led, Pastor Sonny first, two minutes. Deaconess Elvira, two minutes. Pastor George, two minutes. Just lead us. It's like an introductory prayer for this because we will continue, as Pastor Sonny said earlier on, to pray concerning this until we see the fusion until we see the testimonies, until we see these prayers answered. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Pastor Sonny, please lead us two minutes, then Sister Elvira, two minutes, and Pastor Judge, two minutes, just because of time. Amen. Amen. God Hallelujah. Bless. Hallelujah. Brethren, let us pray that God Almighty will tune us up spiritually. That he will tune us up spiritually. He will ginger us up. That will be connected with this move. That will be connected with this move. In the mighty name of Jesus, Please, Father or Lord. Please, unmute, unmute. Everybody Father unmute Lord, at this time. Father Lord, use me, O oh Father. Connect me, O oh Lord, in this new move, in this new wave, O oh Jesus. Whereby you're building a new location for your church, O oh Lord. Whereby you're giving a new direction to your church, O oh Jesus. That I will be connected. I will be linked up spiritually, O oh Jehovah. I will be linked up physically, O oh Jesus. Yes, in Lord. this move, O oh Father, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, O oh Father. Why are me up, O Lord? Why are me up, O Jesus? We look on. Why am I up, O Lord? In the mighty name, we do not presume to know. Father Lord, have your way, Jesus. Walk in the steps of Have your way, Father Lord. That is how we prepare us, O Jehovah. Prepare us, O Lord. That will not be cut napping, O Jehovah. That will not be cut napping, O Jesus. That will not miss out, O Jehovah. In the mighty name, Father, we can learn. Father Lord, that there will be synergy, O Lord. That there will be synergy, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. That there will be synergy, O Lord. We lift up this spring church. As we walk towards this project, O Lord. As we walk towards this program, O Jehovah. I plead the blood of Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, At the end, O Lord, you will take the glory, Lord. At the end, O Lord, you That we may do your bidding and your bidding alone. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Thank Jesus' you, mighty Amen. name, we are praying. Amen. 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 Brethren, let us continue in the spirit of prayers. Let our prayer be that the Almighty will provide a perfect location that He wants Amen. us to use. A location where our spirit man and our physical self will come together 
to glorify him. A location where he will ordain. Father, we are praying for that Father, we pray for the proper location, O Jesus. Father, we pray for that location, O Jesus. Location that will meet every ramification, O Jesus. And the location that will qualify you as a proper location, O Jesus. Father, Lord, that location that will be location that will be so far. The Lord, that it will be a favorable location for you. It will be an ideal location for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. For that prepared place, for that prepared place, Jesus. So, Jesus. Father, Lord, I should be a proper location for all your children, oh Lord. All your children, oh Jesus. I to be an appropriate location for all your children, oh Jesus. Yes, oh Father. The children in this spring church and your children outside this spring church, Lord. For the new ones that you're bringing to your church, oh Jesus. Lord, that you make that proper point, oh Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Send us where all the boys, all the children of God that have been ordained from the Yes, oh Jesus. And they are waiting for the manifestation of the Lord in their lives. Father, we send it to the church where we are needed in the mighty name of Jesus. As your will, Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, today we stand in the place where Philip stood. And you pointed out to him a path in the desert because you have pre positioned an Enoch who had a great influence of bringing the gospel to many other places, including Africa. We want to submit to your leading. And although the, the road that you are pointing to us is not known to us, it is through the desert, but you know the end of the road yes. and you know what you want to do with the people who will be rich if we are obedient. Yes. I therefore pray, Lord, that our eyes will be open, our yes. minds will be open, yes. that our hearts will be yielded to your prompting. Amen. Because in this quietness and in this obedience and in this lack of lack of excitement, but more so to be different lies your glory. Mm. I pray for myself and everybody oh. that Lord where we are standing, there would be that revelation that Philip received. So that even if we are being taken away from a great ministry, we will be obedient to tread the paths that are unknown because the whole earth belongs to you. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. For your spirit mm. and Hallelujah. understanding mm. in this matter. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. As we continue, please continue in the uh, uh, in this in the spirit of prayer. Take up your cup right now. Take up the, the bread and break it, and seal this session with the communion. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. 
Sati kari namrundu dubu kuzali kasala kafika. One spirit, one body, one faith. Hallelujah. Take up the bread and break it with prayers and thanksgiving. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in all things, with thanksgiving and supplication, make your request known unto God. Amen. With thanksgiving. The thanksgiving comes with the confidence that you have in the Lord. You're already thanking him for the thing that you have not seen. Hallelujah. That is faith. Break it and eat it. Mm. Thank you, Father. The same manner, after you have eaten that bread, which is the body of Christ, take up your cup, which represents his blood. He said, this is a new covenant in my blood, that as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Take up this. I take it in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. We bow down before you. We worship at your feet. We submit and surrender. Speak to us. You promise that we hear a voice behind us that will tell us, do not go left, but go right. We wait for that voice. Both prophetic voice, the voice of the word of knowledge, the small still voice, the audible voice, spirit of the living God, we hand it over to you. We pray that you seal every false voice, seal it, block it, and we shall not be deceived. Because your watch says, if it were possible, even the elect will be deceived. But because it is not possible, the elect cannot be deceived. And here we come and seek your face as the elect of God. Carry us through. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you all. Uh, Thank you. Please understand. continue to pray in this manner. Whoever the Lord leads with an information, let us all know so we all can pray on it and proceed as swiftly as we can without being hasty. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Father.